Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you are here joining us today. Uh, we get to tackle a, a topic that needs more of our attention today, which is great. Uh, all of these obviously did deserve our attention, right? As we look and learn more about what God has done, but we have some wonderful imagery that the, the New Testament church picks up on from the Old Testament, so that's great. Good morning, Terry and Diana. Good morning, June. Uh, it's great to have you guys with us today, and Larry as well. Glad you're watching. Let's make our beginning this morning. Good morning, Bev. Let's make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication from me declares the Lord. Now, anytime we're reading one of the prophets, there's there's a lot of back history that we could dig into. We're not going to do a ton of that today, but there is something to be noted about the use of the word servant here. Uh, there are five servant songs in the book of Isaiah. The fourth servant song is about Jesus. Isaiah 52, 53, we often read it on Good Friday. The rest of them are about the servants, which is Israel. And now we can appropriate it to us as the church. So you have no use of this word um, in the plural prior to this point. This is the only time, well, this is the only time in verses, in chapters 40 to 55, that the term servants appears in the plural. Now, after 55, in, in chapters 56, 63, 65, 66, you have servants in the plural again. But the first thing to note is that no enemy is going to be able to subdue Israel. So first we're going to talk about Israel, then we're going to talk about the New Testament church, then we're going to talk about us. This is a good way to, to go about studying Scripture. We first talk about the original context, then maybe how the New Testament church dealt with it, and then us today. But we have to start with the context. So, at first, no enemy will be able to subdue or completely defeat Israel, either on the battlefield, which is what the verse right before this is talking about, or in the courtroom, which is what our verse is about. Verse 16 says, Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. And then in our verse, we have the, the mention of, of judgment. So you're not going to be beat on the battlefield. Israel will not be beat in the courtroom. But Yah, because Yahweh created both weapons, and he then gives them to those who employ them. He's able to deny them success when they attack Zion. Zion's a whole other topic that that we need to be addressing at some point as well, but we can't we don't have time to get to it today. What I would like to do is draw on how the New Testament church used this word servants. Peter Peter states it in this way in in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example for you in order that you might follow in his steps. So this is his description of what a servant looks like. As the suffering servant did this, Isaiah 52, 53, now it is your charge to follow as his servants. And, and Paul Paul's self-understanding is derived from this connection between the suffering servant, Jesus, and his servants, and now we can make the move to us. 
So for instance, Paul, uh, Paul says that, that he carries in his body the marks of Jesus. Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. And then he calls himself a servant. The Greek word is doulos. He calls himself a servant of Christ, a servant of God, a lot. Paul calls himself a servant of God in Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, Titus chapter 1, verse 1, and Philemon chapter 1, or uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Christians are also called God's servants then in Scripture. Now we make the full move to us today. In Acts chapter 4, verse 29, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter 2, verse 20. We've been baptized into the Christ, and the church is a suffering and serving community. So, this text, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. It certainly seems like the world's succeeding against us. But again, we need to think theologically. We're not being promised that we will be without uh, our own defeats in the world. We're talking about an eternal connection to this heritage that we have. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me. Well, what vindication do we have from with God? Vindication for our sins. So we're talking theologically. We're not speaking about anyone that mounts a charge against you personally or your family or the church or Christians. Um, we're, we're talking about eternal wars, as Paul always is wanting to get us to think about the spiritual world, the spiritual realm. The physical world is important too, and we're not neglecting that, but that's not necessarily in view here. The takeaway, I think if anything, is that the church is a suffering and serving community. That makes me uncomfortable. Doesn't make me excited for the work. But in the midst of the suffering work and the serving work, you see what Jesus went through. And you see what we're actually called to do. To suffer and to serve. That's not the same charge that you hear from Joel Olstein. That's not the charge you hear from these televangelists who are saying God is going to make it up to you if you if you suffer. He's going to fix it. That's not the case. And so in the midst of this, we gather together so that we realize we're not alone in this fight. Let us pray together so that we realize we're not alone in this fight. We pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, to see the life that you sent your Son to live for us, it is uncomfortable for us to consider that you've asked us to live the same. Help us to see those opportunities where we are called to suffer, called to serve, and that you would put fellow believers around us to strengthen us in those times when you have called us to bring your gospel to the world. This task is challenging and we need your help or we would ruin it. We would have ruined it long ago had you not helped us from the beginning. We ask for you to remain with us now. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The church is a suffering, serving community. Hmm. Look forward to when I can see you again and spend time with you again so that we can lift one enough, another up in this difficult work. Have a blessed day in Christ. We'll see you soon.